Board of Education meeting for August 29th, 2017. Uh, roll call. Back. Here. Pelagic. Here. Here. Anderson. Stupid. Here. Pleasant Legion. Something here. It's a little one. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Option of the agenda is there a motion to adopt tonight's agenda? Second. Second. Roll call. Back. Yes. 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 1-3 yes. approval of the August 8, 2017 meeting minutes. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. of the last month or so we've been looking at the data that's been coming to us uh, from the state through the secure data center and doing an analysis of what we would project our report card uh, scores are going to be so we'd just like to take a few minutes of your time to present those to you remember these are projections and that as the state continues to get data in they adjust these scores and adjust the individual things that happen with them so the first thing we wanted to talk to you about was the achievement category. And these are the indicators that uh, we all remember of all the different grades of reading, math, and science, social studies tests when they occur. So the first ones that we present to you are the third, fourth, and fifth grade. And you can say, see that we've met the indicators across all of those grade levels and all the subject areas. You can see our percent proficient versus the state standard and whether we met that indicator. Then as we go on into the upper grades, we look at six, seven, eight, same type of tests. And then we go all the way through until we get to that reading test in eighth grade. That's the first indicator that we haven't met. We have that at a 72.7% proficient versus the state standard of an 80. Do we have questions now? Absolutely. Okay, so did something change with, with the type of testing there, or what is your analysis? You knew I was gonna Well, ask. yeah, <laughs> it's, still, it's still the same test from last year, and we've actually improved that score from last right. year because our score was 60. It was 60 really? something. Yeah. yeah, it was almost a 10 point jump. So this jump. is the result of that change of the test from exactly. two years ago, so we're making we're steps still making trajectory is going forward. Correct, and we're at least looking at an increase, so we're on the right plane for that one. Right. So still still working to get up to that 80%, but it was a 10% jump. It was a 10-point raise from last year. 62.3 last year. Okay. And seventy-two seven this year. Okay. And 72, 7 this year. Yeah. So what are we doing different that is showing, that's, that's increasing our scores? 
Like what, what are the teachers doing different that's helping us? One of the most important yeah. things that we've done in English language arts as we've transitioned to these new tests is emphasize informational writing because to prove to read, you have to be able to write on the new state tests. And that, that was a big change for us going back three years when we first had the park test and now we moved into the air test. It's, we're still working on that writing trajectory and that's where we're really concentrating our efforts on in eighth grade. And are we backing that up into our elementary grades? So we're starting Yes, way... we're working on that process all the way down through second and third grade. What are the standards for writing each time and as they change how we're doing that. Thank you. Sure. And then we look at our high school indicators. We can see that we met government history, English 1. We did not meet English 2, Algebra 1, Geometry, and Math 1. And we did meet Biology. Actually, our original scores came out and we had not met Biology. But then they actually re-scored our tests because across the state they had missed a whole portion of the test and scored them incorrectly. So that actually changed to a MET standard about three weeks ago. So um, when we're looking at, again, we've got our ELA scores there, the English 2, again, we're trying to concentrate on our writing, but note that this is also an uh, almost a 10% increase. It was, it was, eight. It was yeah. last from year. last year and just 0.4 below what the 80% was. So we really feel like we're, we're right there on the cusp of that in English 2. Um, algebra 1 and geometry we're still working with. Yeah, geometry, we had a 68.6, so we had a slight increase there. Um, algebra, we had a 79.3 last year which actually met the indicator because the indicator was lower than 80 last year. This year, everything was raised to 80, so we did not meet the indicator. We dropped a couple points on that. So those are the areas that we're definitely gonna have to look at for the coming years to get back. Is this that group of kids that we altered some of the ways that we were offering our math with skipping? As far as? regardless of whether we're altering, if you look at these numbers, for instance, if you look at the algebra one number at 560, we don't have any classes of 560. So this this would include all eighth graders that would be taking algebra. So that, well, we, well, we did have an alteration in how we were doing our math, and when we went to our common core standards and all students took sixth as opposed to skipping, seventh and eighth, it doesn't account for why this score is where it is, because it's still every child was taking geometry. So if we had an eighth grader taking geometry, they would fall within this 520. Or if we had a seventh grader taking algebra, they fall within the 560. Okay. So it's all children regardless of building and grade level. So even though we're saying that's a high school test, if there's a junior high student who's taking one of those tests, their results are actually counted in that way. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then the math one was a new class this year. That was our integrated math. Yeah, integrated math. Typically, um, students who are on an IEP that are not yet ready for algebra one coming out of the eighth grade will go into our integrated math one course. As we move through the indicators then, we've looked at elementary, the middle grades, and the high school. The last indicator is the gifted indicator. And we are not going to meet that again, indicator again this year because of the performance index, which is the part that I put up here for you. We're supposed to be hitting a 117.0 in performance index. And you can see that we're at a 115. What that, how the state figures that is they take each of our students, whoops, sorry about that. Apologize for that. Um, they take each one of the students who are in that gifted cohort for what test they're taking and they look at how they scored, they present that out with points, and then they give you your performance index score. That's also compared to our gifted input points and our gifted value added. At this point, we don't have any value added to report on because they have not loaded any of that data, so we can't tell you that part. 
but we can see here with the uh, performance index that we're not going to miss it. Although this is an increase over last year, we had a 114 performance index for our gifted cohort in this year. We've increased that a point to a 115. And we've been working with the teachers on what the state says we have to do. We have to get 80% of our students in this range. So they have to score a five or higher because there is an advanced plus. Those are coming from our accelerated students. We have to get 80% of our gifted students to that level. And you can see currently if we add these two together, we're at about 70% right now. So where we have our bubble is right here in Accelerated. We need to be pushing about 10% of these kids from Accelerated into Advanced to get this performance index up to the 117 level that we need. And the other, the other area that hurts us a lot are those 31 untested kids. Yes. Those are students, the majority of which were, were opt-outs and all because that's 31 kids that probably would have scored accelerated or advanced or advanced plus. So instead we get zero points for them instead of points. Even though they say that an untested child does not hurt you, the only place that that is not true is when they're calculating performance index right. because they're basically, basically worth zero. So we don't get credit for their performance. What percentage did you say needed to score advanced? 80%. And then the last part of achievement are that indicator totals. So we take all of the elementary, all of the junior high, intermediate, the high school, the gifted indicator, and you add that up and you get a indicator total. So we met 19 out of 25 indicators. That's a 76% for a grade of C. And last year we met 24 out of 29 for an 82.8, the reason for this drop is we lost all those OGD indicators that were still in the report card last year. With this year's report card, all of those OGT indicators went away and we were needing all of those previously, so we went down a little bit in percent. And then next year, because we're losing social studies in fourth and sixth, that would be number. two more indicators that we're going to lose that we need all the time so next year's results are going to be we have to really push to be able to keep where we are right. we're losing we're, we know we're going to lose two indicators that we do very very well on. because the 25 is going to go down to 23 as we lose those social studies tests correct and then the last part of achievement is overall district performance index where they look at all students in the district do the same thing with the number of uh, all the different levels of the test, and they present that all out to give you your performance index total over here, which is current. We are, we are projecting at a 101.7. That's going to be at 84.8% as a grade, which puts us right in the middle of the B range for the performance index. Last year, we were at a 97.9. So we've definitely seen an increase there for the entire district. Then the achievement final grade, so they take all the indicators and they take the performance index, they present it all out, and for that total percentage, we'll be in the B range, because we're gonna be at 3.313. So all of those combined will be a grade of B. The next topic up is gap closing, and these are our uh, subgroups, and we're measuring how well we're doing at closing their black gaps with the general population. So we're looking at uh, subgroups such as economically disadvantaged, African Americans, students with IEPs, any of those different subgroups that we have a qualifying number of students, and they figure that all out for English language arts and for math. So here you see the gap closing for English language arts proficiency, math proficiency, again with all those subgroups figured in, and then when they do it, they also include graduation rate. 
So of those three parts, you can see from English language arts, 67.6, from math, 89.4, from graduation point, 66.7, giving us a preliminary score of 74.6, which puts us at the top end of the C range for gap closing which is the same score that we received last right. year. Last year we had a 70.8, so we, were, we brought this up four points this year. So we went from the 70.8 to 74.6. The next part of the uh, report card is the K through three literacy measure, and they actually take the three different buildings that contribute to this, which would be Clear Creek, Dennis, and Five Points. So I'll be showing you three different buildings. And they, they do each of them separately. So here you can see Clear Creek with a grade of B. Sorry. This year they're at 51.9. Last year they were at 77.0. So that's a drop, but we have a little problem here. If you'll notice, there's no first graders reporting here. So Cindy Howard is in the process of getting the state to find our first graders because those first grade scores have to go into this. When I first saw this, I checked in Dennis and Five Points to see if they got counted there. Nope, you'll see there at Dennis, there's no first graders. The first graders are just missing in the reporting right now. So we're trying to figure out with the state where they're reporting. So here you see Dennis's score at a C at 44.1. Last year they were at a 33.1, so we've had a 10% increase in their score. Five points also at a C at a 35.5. And last year they were at a 49.6, so we're seeing a decrease there. Again, we're, these are preliminary numbers and we're really wanting to see where those first graders come in, which building area they're gonna be reported at so we can accurately reflect those scores in the K through three literacy. So overall, right now, without the first graders in there at all, it looks like we're at 43.6%, which puts us in the C range for that report card indicator. And last year we were at 47.4. Again, we're looking at that decrease and wondering how first graders are gonna to contribute to that. Can you report that back to us once you find the first graders yes. information? Yeah. I asked Cindy about it today and she was going to call up there again, but as of this afternoon, she still had no response from that. And she's been trying to get a response since last week to figure out where they are. Right. Um, do you ever foresee now that we're required that our juniors take the ACT, do you ever foresee that being part of the report card? Um, it is. It's all. It's it's in the prepared for success oh, it is. part of the report card that is reporting on our high school and how those students are ready for college level courses or the workforce. So we'll be talking about that in just a minute. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next area of the report card that we don't have any reporting on is called progress, and that's actually the value add, added measure. And again, that that information has not populated at all. That is the last piece of the information that typically comes from the state because it's such an involved formula. It's got, John, you just checked today. It's huge, yes, I just checked today just to make sure it wasn't out there. Um, but it's huge. I mean, it takes into account every test, every grade, everything from all the schools, all the grade levels, every test. And then they, they create these huge, crazy formulas and spreadsheets. And then they, from that, they take pluses and minuses. But the value added score is that it's the four parts of it are there's an overall score, there's a gifted score, there's students with disabilities, and then there's the lowest 20% achievement. And uh, those are the areas that, that we typically have struggled with here a little bit, the students with disabilities and the lowest 20%. And we've been working on that a lot, trying to get those up. So we're really anxious to see how we're going to do this year with those. And then the next part is the overall graduation rate, which we just got right. Monday. Yeah. They finally reported that. 
So you see right now we have a 95.6 as an overall score in graduation rate, which is an A for that part. And we, we actually went down in that from a 97.9, but it doesn't take much of one student, two students that for some reason didn't graduate within four years to, to have that go up or down. These are reported a year in arrears because they have the, the graduation rate for the 16, 17 school year, that, that window is open until the end of October. So they're still reporting the graduation rate from last year. So for the report card, you'll see these are for the ninth graders who entered in 2013 and graduated by 2016. So they run a year in arrears on the graduation rate. So we had 414 graduates in 2016 and 433 students that entered ninth grade in that in 2013. So we had 19 students that for some reason didn't graduate in four years. Uh, and last, like I said, and then the next slide is the five-year graduation rate. So basically that takes uh, anybody that entered in 2012 and graduated in 2016. So there were 416 of those graduates in 2015 and then 422 now and 98.6. So we stayed about the same on that. Our five-year graduation rate could stay pretty much even. And those are two that we typically pick up pretty easily in A4 because we hardly have, we don't have, at least not, going back as far as I can see, we haven't dropped below 95% of graduation rate. And then the prepare for success, which uh, we were mentioning with the ACT. Um, you see this is gonna be a new one for us. And we have the number of students that earned a remediation free score on all parts of the ACT and um, how many points we get for that. And then the number of bonus students that count an additional 0.3 bonus points because they also earned a three or higher on at least one AP exam and then they give us those points. So right now, as we look at those totals, this is based on what we earned this year, and last year we were at a 69.4. We were a little bit concerned about this going into the year because we've never had a full grade ACT. So this was, it was a little nerve wracking for us to sit back and see how this came out, but it came out very well for us, and I, I think Kyle would agree with that. He mentioned that before. Uh, 23.1 average and in years past with just having students make the choice to take it where they were from like 24.3 to 24.7 so we dropped a little bit more than a point having mandating every junior to take it that shocks me yeah. that's amazing we, we, we were very pleased we were very pleased yeah. Yeah. Then you add in the right. first time students are taking it with the Chromebooks around um, yeah. you know so I I was, when we got, when we received that in the beginning of August, we were extremely pleased. Yeah. Did we have an increase in the students that are taking our ACT prep class? Well, we did an additional program this year when we brought in Torch Prep. Torch prep. We did. We have, we have the practice of, test help. Yeah, right. practice test help we did early fall, um, Torch Prep and the students, but we didn't have a ton of students that really Signed up. That signed up for that as far as to make that big of an impact as a group. Our, our uh, college prep ACT class is per, has, has stayed pretty steady as far as the full. Um, it's full. It's full. I mean, it's, it's as full as it can be. But it's never dropped below either. So you know, we had we had 484 students take the ACT or SAT the year before, 559 this year. Uh, we had, and the funny thing is, we had 216 students score the the three or higher, both years. So the eighth, the, the three was both years, it was the same number of students that scored three or higher. So that's good. So previously with our scores, did the three or above on their AP exams count for extra points? Yes. yes. So that's always been the same? Well, it was, it's only been two years right. that they had the, this, or, this Yeah, since part we started of, counting. Correct, them. yeah. Interesting. That's just really shocking. Shocks me. I'm glad. I thought that we'd see a big decrease yeah, right. too. They did really well. That's 
not one you feel. Is that the last slide? Any other general questions? <laughs> Could you go back to the, I'm sorry, go sure. way back. Uh, way back, way, way back. Way the back. The, way back the very front, okay. I think it's probably some question. Um, Keep going. It, it was like one of the first large okay. slides. There you go. Okay. So within the elementary, what accounts for the big discrepancy in terms of just say fourth grade, for example? We had 453 take social studies and reading, but only 396 take math. Do you know why there's such a large group of students missing from Well, wow. it was just compacted. Well, yeah. We have about 70 kids right here. Who actually take? Okay, okay. Fifth so they're grade now. they're sliding between. Right, and then okay. there's a bunch okay. of fifth graders who took sixth grade. That's because this is where really the large amount of, of subject accelerators happen, but not before this grade level, but right at fourth grade. So you lose them here, but you pick them up down here. Yeah. And then if you go up to sixth grade, that's the same. You'll see the sixth grade, 527. So we had 70 more sixth graders. You know. Test, math that's being taken in the math. Because there were quite as many sixth graders taking the seventh grade test. Okay. I do have another question. Yes. We were actually in here for our board meeting a while ago when you, I think we had the sixth grade building present. And the teachers were talking about they had access to some sort of data that they were pulling specifically what the students were missing. And I don't remember if it was on the report card or if it was off of tests that they were taking. And so they were differentiating off of that. Was that off of the report card or was that, I think it was in social studies possibly, they were working as a team to do yeah, this. That, those yeah. are their common assessments. I'll let you go ahead and guess. They, they do common assessments and they're pulling data from different strands. So if they see that there's a strand that's weak, they're gonna target that strand. So are they able to, like I'm looking at the eighth grade reading, are the, do the teachers have access to the areas that we're missing, like the gaps that yes, we're so seeing So they can here? see, for instance, if a student is weak in informational text. And I wanted to add in, you had asked about the eighth grade, some, some changes in the eighth grade, what, what may have caused different, different, different scores. And we did change the schedule of the junior high last year. They're working on a different type of schedule. We used to block language arts where they had a period that was somewhat reading and another period that was somewhat writing. Mm -hmm. What we've done is we've combined that into one ELA period. In so doing, we had six extra teachers that we moved out into different areas. So for instance, some of our former ELA teachers are now teaching social studies. So those are teachers who are trained in reading they're able to, to help the kids with the informational text. They're also able to, to work with the students on writing projects because they have the background in that area. Yeah. So I think, in my opinion, some of that has contributed to the, to the rise of 10 points, that we have some former ELA teachers teaching social studies in, in that area that were um, licensed 1A teachers. We don't have a lot of them left, but they, they are tools. Yeah. And then Lisa, I'd also say, as we look at, for example, at that sixth grade social studies and how well they did because of those common assessments, we are in the process of rolling yeah. out a new um, technology program that we purchased that has uh, air-like um, assessment item banks that they can pull from to help them pinpoint those areas when they create their common assessments. Because what we heard from the teachers was, we're not always capable of creating the right question. So we were able to find this resource for them. So we're rolling that out this year for them to help them beef up those uh, common assessments to do that data analysis. And would that be like professional development that you're helping? Yes. So they don't have to figure it out on their own? Yes. September 29th, they're going to be talking about this. Awesome. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, 3.3 committee reports. Uh
to start off with, uh, we actually have three committees in the last couple of weeks meet, uh, the Health and Safety Committee. Yes, uh, we had a meeting on um, August 9th. I had a uh, huge amount of uh, people there. There was myself, there was Heather Bauer, and uh, Emily Geisel. Um, one of the unfortunate things is we have to try to you know, get these committees in, but at the beginning of the year, beginning of August, it is so hard to get people to come. So we're working on trying to get that scheduled a little bit better. Um, but Emily gave us an update on our uh, cybersecurity stuff. Uh, we're doing some stuff that's trying to uh, train teachers to not click on things they shouldn't click on and, uh, and doing some things like that. Um, we uh, discussed the goals, our um, OIP process goals, and had some nice discussion about that in terms of where we think we need to go. Um, we had um, updates on what we're doing within the buildings, uh, which there's not a whole lot right now because I've got some of that scheduled for later on in the year. Um, uh, the main thing I've got to work on, and I've talked about this before, is um, we've got to work on the five points, the evac plan. You know, we have a plan and we have a place, but you know, five points is a huge building in the middle of nowhere when it comes to other big buildings around. So I've got to try to make contact with that new church that's just down, not new, but the church that's down the road from it a little bit. No matter what, it all requires transportation sometimes to get the whole, you know, a thousand students somewhere. Uh, if we have to evac, uh, have an evacuation from, from five points. Um, so our next meeting is on October 11th, so hopefully uh, we can, you know, folks can be there. We'll, we're being on the swing of school and everything else, and that'll be uh, the next meeting. Anybody have any questions? Is this where you're going to bring up about building the bus garage, adding 15 buses over there? Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I have questions, not about what you guys talked about there, but it did come up on this last month. Once again, way back um, when board meetings were in here, um, Officer Don came because it was when we did an Alice training. Right. What is what do we do for current staff with our training for that type of thing? I asked just because we did it for the agency that I work with and right. you know where the staff actually experienced what it was like. Correct. What are we doing for our staff here with that type of Sergeant training? Don and, and um, Officer Nicely um, are the two that, that handle that training. Um, they normally schedule it with the principals, especially since we've had a lot of new staff over the last couple of years. Yeah, we need to have another thinking. one. Um, one of the other pieces is with the, um, the new requirements that are out by the state, we have to have either a round table, a, um, an actual evacuation of our implementation of our plan, or a, um, a live training. We have to do at least annually now. Uh, it was just introduced in the, in the Senate, I believe, about making it only you have to do your evacuation plan once a year. So the, that's a big change for schools because, you know, the just the the idea of trying to implement your, your evacuation safety plan every year is, is time consuming. I mean, it takes a lot of prep on just not from, not from a standpoint of, you know, do we know what we're gonna do? Because the teachers are, they have, they know what they need to do to evacuate a building, things like that. But if you really are implementing this fully like you would normally do, you have to schedule people in, you have to schedule busing, you have to schedule things. There's a lot of prep work that has to occur. Um, Sergeant Don is trying to get a meeting with someone for us to be able to go through and talk through some of these things because the new requirements are pretty labor intensive, and you know we have not a whole lot of labor people. To implement some of that stuff so we're trying to work through that piece did you say it is required every year to actually have a there's there's one of three things right now either a table a tabletop a simulation involving uh, you know the community as well as this that's not a full evacuation plan or implementing your full evacuation plan and, and you know when they there's a an active shooter in your building and you have to evacuate something like that so that you just think you know the evacuation plans are pretty intense it can be a bomb threat it can be you know the evacuation or the uh, 
the, uh, the plans, the safety plans are very involved. So there's about 20 or 30 different scenarios. You have to take one of those scenarios and go start to finish with it. I think the thing that, that struck me when I went through the training, I had sat through here and listened mm -hmm. to the PowerPoint of what it was, but I didn't realize it wasn't you do A, then L, then I. It's, these are the different options Correct. you have to evaluate, right. and it's not always getting that closet, but that might be an option that Correct. is the best thing. Exactly. So I think that, especially since you said, you know, as we have new staff come in, it's really important to make sure that everybody's recognizing if right. you're in the library and this happens, you know, so it's not teaching you for the specific place where you're at, but it's a mentality of how you need to evaluate the situation. So Correct. I hope that we are doing that not just in a piece right. of paper and this is what Alice right. is, but a real life situation Correct. that, you know, it, we felt the emotion of it as, you know, right. we had to role play it out. And it was a very intense yep. training because I think that's what really is preparing our staff. If they're in that situation, you're going to feel that intensity. Right. Thanks. Thank you. That's it. All right. We'll move on to the financial insurance.
Who's the connection um, for the Clear Creek Library? What is her connection to? So sure. with that, there was nothing different with the with the accommodation part no. of it. It's just they separated it into two separate policies. Correct. correct. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. I didn't I couldn't find anything different what they were doing. I just want right. to make sure that the verbiage is the yes. the accommodations are the same. Yes. Okay. Fifty two hundred and uh, is concerning the new attendance that the entire county is doing uh, rolled out throughout the entire uh, uh, organization. The reporting student progress is a revision 5420, class rank 5430. We have a replacement on the graduation requirements. We talked about that with Andrea Cook at our previous board meeting. And then the uh, participation in extracurricular activities for students not enrolled in district students who in their home school and the charter school can participate in some of our extracurricular activities this day, actually, the year of spring. Again, all these are first grade. We appreciate the questions. Can I ask Kyle, and I know that he's already come and explained this, but I still can't get it fully through my head. The attendance policy. Can you explain the eight and the twelve thing again? The date, the difference? Yeah, and wouldn't chime in if you if you but I just I can't fully process it. People have been asking me and I need to hear it again. Well, we used to have eight uh, parents would have eight parent notes that could use during the school year. And pretty much I mean to be honest, you could go, you could take, in those eight days could be used to go on a vacation. If you called and said, you know, John's sick, he's not coming in, parent, basically you had eight notes that you can use to excuse their absence. Okay. What they've gone to now is they've gotten rid of the eight days because the state is moving with house bill, they're moving to, to county hours now. So they're going to, from eight days to 12 occurrences. So really what that ends up being is now actually parents have really basically 12 occurrences and that ranges from the if the student comes tardy to school, they sign in at 734, and the parent writes a note, that's one occurrence. If they miss the entire day, that's one occurrence. That's so weird. now what they're doing is, yeah. yeah. And then so at 38 hours, now once a student reaches 38 hours, whether it's unexcused or excused or combined, regardless, a warning letter goes home. If I pull Brand and Addy out of dentist to go on a five, uh, six day vacation, that's going to be about 40. One forty-two hours. I'm going to get a warning letter in the mail stating, "Hey, FYI, your child or children have missed more than 38 hours of school." It's just a warning letter, but it's a combination of excused and or unexcused. It could be all excused. It doesn't matter. Um, really, the, the penalty comes in is when you start accumulating three different levels of unexcused hours. That's when the attendance intervention meetings will take place, um, etc. So that's it's they're they're really charting the hours. They're not charting really the occurrences. 
we are. Once you get past 12, it's a mandatory doctor's note. Where before, last year, it was once you got past eight, parent notes, it was a mandatory doctor's note. So you said the occurrences count the same. If somebody's tardy or if they miss the entire day, they count the same. So, but the hours are tracked yes. differently in those scenarios? Yep. That one would be a certain number of minutes and the other one would be the, the entire school day? Right, so like if, you, if, if you miss two days of school and one day you come in, you have two occurrences, one day you you come in late arrival, two hours. And then you miss a full day and our full day is the same for English teacher for seven hours and two days you can accumulate nine hours. Okay. And we track that down to the minute. Yes, I feel like that's the part that yes. kind of brought some confusion, yes. the fact that the occurrences are true. They both count as an occurrence. Correct. So I've heard people saying, exactly. well, if I'm, if I'm gonna get an occurrence, then I might as well just keep them out the entire day. But, I'm, but there's, yeah. so there's clearly a misunderstanding there in terms of, because yes. I've heard that from several people yes. that sort of view it that way, because they're both, they're thinking, they both get treated as occurrences. I'm not sure that it's clear yeah. that, yes, they count toward that 12 the same, but they, the hours are tracked separately. Right. It feels like that seems to have maybe been lost in translation. I agree. Yeah. 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 Draw a picture or something. Wendy on the website. Yes, yes. And again, I'm, we probably communicate. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I don't d dispute that. I, it, just for whatever reason, it seems to have not really sunk in. I think just through some of the conversations that I've, I've heard. I would, I would agree that it's even for us, it's a bit more confusing because before it was, a, it was a very easy cutoff. It was all based right. on on days. on days. Now, before though, if a student was a half day, you know, four tardies, for parent notes would equal one parent note of that eight in years past. So there are still some little things that parents and students probably didn't see as much as we did here as far as tracking those total of eight days. So when you break it down, it's really, you know, you could have somebody who used eight parent notes, but technically was late four times, that's one note, missed three days, there's four, was late four other days, there's five, so really had probably more than 12 occurrences to get those eight notes. Mm -hmm. So you wanna add anything, Wendy? Or? We have tried to be very specific, like for everybody that took their child out for the solar eclipse, we let them know it's one occurrence and then this is how many minutes that would add up for them. Um, I think that's also on the video and um, I think we also have that covered in the policy. Where is the video? Online. Who's in the video? Pardon me? Who's in the video? Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're on there's there's under attendance. Yeah, there's a tab under under the district tab, student attendance policy. Yeah, I found it along with like the, the letter. Um, but I still now because I guess the other piece that I've heard too is just the differentiation between the excused and the unexcused. Again, because they both count. Correct. Right. Toward the occurrences. To the warning letter. To the warning letter. Correct. Yes. Now when you start getting into the AIT meetings, that's. that's now you're getting to your, your basis of your, like that's what that unexcused is totally out to 38, 40 something, and 72. If it's unexcused, yeah. if you have, it depends on if it's like concurrent. If you have 30 in a row, let's see. If it's 30 consecutive hours of unexcused, 42 unexcused in a school month, or 72 unexcused in a school year. We already have some that are already falling into this category so we'll have intervention meetings for, with them probably within the next probably two to three weeks and, and the kids are kind of falling in that category of students who have said or are coming that have been we've been toward of moving but we just haven't actually received a records request from the other school yet we still have account that's not being here that would be some of them we yeah. also have some uh, some of our kids that have anxiety issues and the parents just keep them home to try to deal with the anxiety issues and they're not coming to school um, once they hit past those 12 occurrences then we'll, they'll get the letter and then we'll have to have a meeting so would it help do we do you want doctor notes or are they just useless up to the 12 do we really only need them at 13 and because that's another question that people yeah, ask for the people my kids aren't that, out that much but for people whose kids are out do you want notes in 1 through 12 or does that really not matter until the 13th occurrence i think you should always provide doctor's notes if you have them because if you're going to have to come in and have a meeting we're going to sit down and we're going to go through all of the reasons why they okay. wouldn't be at school and so you can show me that you've got doctor's notes for these things there's an illness here that might play into what we do later on with your case okay 
And I kind of, I tell, tell parents, I mean, your occurrences or years past your parent notes, those are for extenuating circumstances that maybe doesn't require a doctor's visit. If you're going, if you're going to be gone for two days because you're going to Grambles, that would be one to use. If, um, if you're, you know, you wake up and you kind of got the flu, but you really maybe don't need to go to the doctor, that's a parent note. So if you take the student to the doctor and turn in a parent note, you're really sacrificing a parent note by doing so when you could just turn in a doctor's note. You see what I'm saying? And then what happens is that the parents then you know then they want to take their kid uh, on a Friday to go visit grandma and grandpa and then well you're out of parent notes. Well if I would know that I would have used a doctor's note. Well yeah. I understand that, but you didn't use a doctor's note. So then they're wanting to bring in a doctor's note this was three months ago. And so that's where if you take your kid to the doctor, we always recommend bringing a doctor's note. Plus, like you said, when you go to intervention meetings, it's nice to be able to have the doctor's notes there versus just a bunch of parent notes. And the goal of the intervention meeting is to try to understand why your child's not at school. So it's to come up with a plan to have the child and the parent be successful. It's not to, our goal is not to get them in trouble. The goal is to get the child here to be able to reduce whatever barriers to their education there are. But it's something you want the, those is the, the letters, because they count as excused absences, right? So isn't it 38 hours of unexcused where it triggers the, no, it's a thirty. It's a combination of excused and unexcused. For the warning letter. Correct. Right, but then the next thing says a student, if a student acquires thirty-eight hours unexcused occurrences, an absence intervention team meeting will be assigned. Right, that's correct. That's correct. So, right. so I'm saying you want to you you want the doctor to know because yes, the the occurrences whether they're excused or unexcused doesn't matter to trigger the letter, but it sounds like if they're unexcused, it triggers the meeting. That's correct. I think the question was last year. If going to a doctor that insurance would pay for could keep them away from Warren County calling them, they would go to the doctor to get the doctor's note. So that's where some questions are when you're getting near the end of the year. You see what I'm saying? You know what might be a good idea is like a question and answer fact sheet. Can that make you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Frequently asked questions and kind of going through that. I think that might be a good idea. I, I mean, I'll be honest, it's, I think everybody here would agree, it's been, uh, it's been a, a a challenge adapting to that change from just truly understanding all the all the pieces because occurrences in our are completely different. But I think more people wanting to put them together. Right. I think That's tonight what's been good with a couple of board members here with the questions that they're hearing. I think if you guys wouldn't mind sending those questions to me and that would start a fact sheet that Scott will work on with Kyle, with uh, Wendy and the team and we can get that out. Yeah. And it very well might be that they're all addressed in the video. I, my kids don't miss very much of this. This just isn't a concern to me. But the people that have been asking me, their kids do miss more. And so they think I know the answers to everything with this, and I really don't. So this information does help. But I do think that FAQ would, I think it would help. But I'll also leave them to your videos. And so. you might I'm direct almost them to the it. website as well. And it's got my phone number. I, I probably feel five or six questions or phone calls every single day on the subject. Really? So if you wanted to send them my way, it would be easier. Instead of you Absolutely. Trying to, yeah. I almost right. wanted Mr. Fidel, if we should bring the screen down and show that video for everyone. <laughs> That's not a good idea. I feel like, uh, I feel like I'd love to see Wendy. What? <laughs> yeah. All right. I have a question on the uh, last one. Uh, it used to be that if you're homeschooled, you had to go to school, I think, two periods a day to be able to no. That, that you know, they, if they're homeschooled, if they're charter school, they live here. They don't participate here. They've got to make the team. Right. 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 Any other questions? We'll go to 5.2. This is the approval of. I do have a question. Oh, sorry. sorry. So if we vote in next meeting, the re uh, was it under reporting student progress is where we would be doing the student of distinction. Then will we report, will we, I feel like we need to communicate out to the high school parents that we voted this in and that it will be changing for the class, the junior class. We've actually been communicating that all along. We just haven't given them a date when the board finalizes That's, it. I know. But through the different parent meetings that Kyle's had and so forth, but as soon as the board would approve it next month, then we would blast right. this thing out, yes. Right, okay. And, you know, I'm not even opposed, maybe, maybe if we even communicate just as 
officially gone for a first read. That way, if anybody has any last minute concerns, I agree. the last month, they have, they have a, a four weeks to voice it. I don't think we can over communicate yeah. on this. I don't want to no. feel like it's being slid under. Right. Hey, I'd rather really over communicate. What we talked about about last year, yep. now I'm on the first read. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 5.2 the approval of the education board agreement with the DS Education First. It's an actual agreement here uh, for your approval. To give you a little background on this, we've been doing international trips here for several years. Early in the school year, uh, the art crew and Spanish team met with us, talked about some of the changes that had happened in the past. So Kyle and I met with them, and we actually ended up bringing our tour with because there was some confusion on what was part of the tour company, what was part of the school. And it really kind of blew me for a loop that they could have we we didn't have full control of this. Um, the tour company was giving so many tour, you know, so many trips to this person or that person. Sometimes the teacher was kind of on duty, sometimes they weren't, it was just kind of strange. So what we did was we actually had our attorney work very closely with the tour agency to develop an agreement that, and this one is for our Spanish teacher as they're getting ready for a 2008 tour, just to really clarify who's in charge, you know, and, and how the accommodations are going to be taken care of, how the chaperones are going to be doing, what's going to be paid, so forth. So this has actually been, would you say, Kyle, probably a three to four month process here. At least, yeah. yeah but we've got a real good, solid, um, solid agreement here, ready to roll. All right. That one we can give you, Mr. President. Is there a motion to accept 5.2? So moved. Second. Second. Yes. 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 Mr. Chairman, members of the board, for your consideration tonight, uh, 6.1 is our annual approval of uh, payment of in lieu of transportation. Uh, those are for those schools that there aren't enough ridership uh, to be able to take a bus there effectively, efficiently to, to pay for that. So uh, those are. Uh, our normal schools that are there and our, just our normal stuff. The one thing that's a change this year that, that they just found out about <laughs> the other day is um, in the budget bill this year, this is now an unfunded mandate. This will not be funded by the state. Up until this year, it was just a flow through. We'd send it up there, we'd tell them how many people, we'd tell them how much we paid, and they would give us the state minimum. Starting this year, it becomes our general fund. How, how much was that? How much was it? Not. They haven't set that figure yet. No. That, as far as I know, have they? Yes, they said it is two hundred and fifty dollars, but I believe that's what it's been. It's yeah. I don't think it was an increase in this yeah, year. Yeah, um, I went to a budget analysis seminar last Monday, I believe, and it set at two fifty. I want okay. to say it costs us anywhere. It depends how many writers come in. Yeah, I just wondering on average how many. Getting fifty to seventy thousand. Right. That's about it. Just another surprise that was hidden in the budget bill that nobody knew. It was a big surprise at the, the meetings you went to. <laughs> um, 6.2 is approval of our bus stops. It's our annual bus stop approval. 6.3 is approval of our uh, band camp staff. Um, you know, we have a, a new marching band director, um, and uh, he's been doing a great job and all, and it's just, you know, this first year he's trying to get everything going. and. And he was doing great, and he's trying to get everything done. It just gets caught up a little bit. And believe it or not, it's, we're still earlier than we were last year approving the final <laughs> band camp staff workers. Uh, 6.4 is uh, approval of a consulting contract. 
uh, with Leslie Netley as math coach. This is something we did last year and the year before, and we've got that again. How much money do we have left in that? We started with 60, and we have used her for probably under 15 hours at this point. Right. Around 15 to 20. It'll, it'll be total over 45,000 for that which, currently. Which is she at SI? She's doing Dennis. Clear Creek, Dennis, and Fire. So do we have a math coach at SI at all? No, we do not. Do we have any coaches at SI? No, we do not. We're hoping the wonderful work she did the last couple of years will continue. So is that just based off of the data and what our needs are? Yes. Uh, 6.5, uh, approval of a continuing contract for Charlotte McGinley. Uh, she had a continuing contract when she was hired here years ago, but she, um, because of whatever reason, she never asked for it again here. And so this year she asked for it. And by law, we have to approve a continuing contract for her if she had one here in the state of Ohio in a previous school district. So that's that's a, just happens to be one of those things that is just required. 6.6, .6, approval of personnel items. Uh, unfortunately, we do have one resignation that's gonna hurt really badly. Uh, Emily Geisel has been uh, hired as the uh, um, tech goddess up at Fairborn, so she will be starting there on November, uh, September 11th. So, fortunately, the 8th will be her last day here. It's going to be a big loss for us, but just like everything else, we just keep on going. Um, next one, we've got educational assistant. She's resigning because she's going to be doing her student teaching. So. Uh, she may end up back here as a teacher here real soon, but uh, she has to get that done. Uh, then we have some employment of uh, cl classified and certified personnel. All those folks were hired based on need. Um, the one, uh, Kevin Gallagher down there at Clear Creek, that was the additional first grade we added. Um, the educational assistants, all of those are related based on one-to-one -one needs or needs for um, IEP students that is written in the IEP. So every one of those that's there, that's the requirement um, for that. We have um, the bus aides, we have some bus driver aides, bus drivers, and then some various um, substitute classified staff members. Anybody have any questions? I just, I was wondering, for the bus aides, is that just based off of, like do, do buses that have special needs kids get bus aids, or is there, extra energy on the bus that well, these, or these are the, these are all based on the needs of the students the majority of which are special ed uh, we do have one special case that that we needed to put an aid on a bus and we've and that's we've taken care of that piece sure. um, you know there was but it's all it's all special ed related special needs. Okay, is there a motion to accept <coughs> items um, 6 1 to 6 6? So moved. Second? Second. Roll call. Uh -huh. Yes. 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 And finally, 6.8 is approval of the um, athletic supplementals or the athletic personnel report. Um, we have a camp worker, we have a supplemental res resignation, temporary health, and then just some other approvals of some other supplemental folks. Is there a motion to accept 6.8? So moved. Second? Second. Roll call. Uh, yes. 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 Abstain. Thank you. President, we're down to the board member reports, comments. Uh, and as a reminder, we'll be doing executive session tonight. So this is the last week for Mr. Good. Uh, yeah, all I want to do is, um, <laughs> it seems like every board, me board meeting I'm doing this, uh, thank Mr. Fennell, uh, Ms. Cook, and Mr. Wiggins for another um, you know, uh, information pack session. Um, I love the data that you guys present. I really appreciate the way you present it. It's very well done, so thank you. Um, and then I guess uh, just thank you to various uh, uh, groups that uh, donated money to all the, uh, you know, the, the different areas around the school. It's always appreciated. And um, 
know, always put to use. So uh, thank you for those groups. That's it. I just want to say I hope everybody uh, is doing a good start to the school year. It seems generally positive from what uh, what I've heard so far. I mean, there's a lot of energy this time of year, and so it's, it's great to see, and I hope it continues throughout the year. So I hope everybody is enjoying the, the start to another great year. I have a couple things. Um, one is thanks to the parents that have donated lots of stuff. Even at the high school, the Pulse Group um, asks for donations because a lot of the high school teachers don't get any donations. Like in elementary, we automatically donate tissues and wipes and stuff like that. So they parents have even been donating at the high school level for the teachers so they don't have to go out and buy them. So thanks for that. Um, the report card, thank you for that data. That is awesome to see and to know that we're using that to look and evaluate what we're doing and how we're doing things so that's that's really encouraging to see and just to know that we're that we're really using that for to move us ahead um, my last question was just um, when we did the committee reports if there is a parent like you had mentioned or john had mentioned with the safety re um, committee if there's a parent that wants to join the committee is now the time or is january that we're evaluating parents that are that would like to join a committee Actually, it sent it out in the spring, and so a lot of that's already you know, we already added them. Like we added um, Michelle Bauer to this committee, Heather Bauer to more policy committee. So we have district parents council. Um, the principals are going through that right now. Um, there. Um, so do parents good. ask if they want to be, or do principals? Some, yeah. Some of the well yes. Okay, so that's the only committee that has parents joining right, right now. All the rest of them have already. All the rest are good. Are good. Okay. Oh, the fit committee. I'm always looking for people who have more budget finance. So, like, what do you want for budget and finance? Like, what? Do you want somebody with finance background or? Not because then it's not a, it's more of a collaboration and conversation instead of putting them out to the car and saying, like, you know, there was a one person who just um, a personal experience with a teacher and it just it keeps my perspective and um, remembering the quality of the teachers that we have here and teachers that it is clear that they're not here to just put in their seven to three or nine to five or whatever but that truly are digging deep into your specific child so how, how many students <coughs> language teachers have in their class? Uh, for English? Uh, no, for like Spanish. Oh, Spanish? Anywhere from probably 20, as low as probably 22, as high as close to as 30 to 31. Right, so times seven class periods, six class periods, however many. So that's a lot of students that they're having. And I had a, a correspondence back and forth with the teacher, and I was just so, so impressed. It's actually the teacher, I don't know her at all, what's her, she's going on a trip. So we just approved Annis. Aston. Mrs. Aston. Aston. Mrs. Aston. So impressed with the feedback that she gave of how to help my son study in very specifics of only study ten terms at a time for two minutes at a time. That's all that they can handle. And once they know that term, put it down, pick up another one. Specifics. I was just you could tell that she and she's already getting to know him as a learner. And I just was so impressed with the things that she gave specifically for him and wanting to meet with us so it just reminded me that clearly she's one i've never i have no clue who she is but i'm going to meet her tomorrow um, but it's just very encouraging to re it just reminds me the quality of the um, teachers and the staff that we have here that really care for kids they're not just checking the box and putting in the time so thanks to all the teachers that's it all right congratulations to all the staff for a pretty good start this year echoing what already been said about the donations and the three amigos that was a great presentation <laughs> um, 
I just have one question again. When does the eligibility start for what have people ask me about for athletics? Okay, when are we going to start? As what's the next Friday? This so this week there'll be teachers will be turning. I, say, I think I think next Friday will start next Friday. first reporting time. Okay, I'll so, have Chuck Austin on what dates to send out for that. Jen. Got this week before uh, it actually starts. Part of that's for me too. So <laughs> yeah. you know, progress book and You've had people ask. <laughs> All right, that's it for me. I guess nothing else. We're adjourned.